Welcome to nonstopneuron.com, where learning medical concepts is as easy as watching cartoons. In this video, we will talk about venous pressure. Broadly, we can study venous pressure under two headings, central venous pressure and peripheral venous pressure. Central venous pressure is pressure in the right atrium. What? Atrial pressure is venous pressure? Yes! See, all the systemic veins take the blood to the right atrium. So, right atrium is the final assembly point for all the veins. Moreover, the right atrium is always open for veins, without any separation in between. So, the right atrial pressure is aptly the central venous pressure. Normally, it is about zero millimeters of mercury and it can range from minus 5 to plus 30 millimeters of mercury in different situations. So let's talk about the factors that affect central venous pressure. It is regulated by the balance between the inflow and outflow of blood in the right atrium. The factors that increase the inflow of blood increase the pressure. On the other hand, the factors that decrease the inflow decrease this pressure. All the factors affecting venous return are applicable here, too. As we have already discussed them in detail in a separate video, I won't repeat that information here. Now come to the outflow. It depends on the pumping activity of the heart. If the heart pumps out blood rapidly, the pressure falls. And if the pumping becomes weak, as happens in heart failure, the pressure increases. So this was about central venous pressure. Now let's talk about peripheral venous pressure. Well, peripheral venous pressure is the pressure at peripheral veins, obviously. See, as such, the large veins are at zero pressure. So when wide open, they easily let the blood get in without much building up of pressure in peripheral veins. But just like any ambitious endeavor, the journey of blood in peripheral veins is not that easy. There are some compression points for large veins that provide some resistance to the flow of blood. For example, the veins from the head are compressed at the neck by atmospheric pressure. Veins from the upper limb are compressed by their sharp turn over the first rib. And veins from the lower limb and abdomen are compressed by large organs and intra-abdominal pressure. Because of these compressions, the peripheral veins face some resistance, and pressure in them is usually 4 to 6 millimeters of mercury. Now that you know the usual range of this pressure, let's talk about what can bring about changes in this. First, let's talk about the effect of right atrial pressure. With increasing right atrial pressure, it becomes more difficult for blood in veins to flow forward. So there is a corresponding rise in pressure in peripheral veins, too. Next, intra-abdominal pressure can affect the pressure in veins in the legs. Normally, this pressure is about 6 millimeters of mercury. It increases in conditions like pregnancy, obesity, large tumors, etc. That compresses veins in the abdomen. So pressure starts building up in leg veins, too. Apart from these factors, gravity also has a huge impact when a person is in a standing position. Just like how pressure increases as we go deeper into the water, the venous pressure increases as we go from the heart to below. Considering the heart as a reference point, the pressure at the feet is about 90 millimeters of mercury more than that at the heart. Opposite to this, the pressure in the head gets negative. The negative pressure in the head is possible due to the skull, which prevents the compression of tissue by atmospheric pressure. So this was all about the venous pressure. Now let's have a quick summary. Central venous pressure is pressure in the right atrium. Normally, it's zero millimeters of mercury. It's affected by how much blood is coming in and how much is going out. Due to the compression of large arteries, the pressure in peripheral veins is 4 to 6 millimeters of mercury. It rises with rising central venous pressure. And the pressure in leg veins may rise as a consequence of the increase in intra-abdominal pressure, too. 
Because of gravity, the pressure in the lower part of the body increases as we go lower and lower from the level of the heart. And for sticking with me until the end, I have a bonus point for you. With gravity, there is a parallel increase in arterial pressure, too. So the difference in pressure between the two, which basically drives the flow of blood, is maintained constant. So don't worry when you stand up next time. Blood will keep flowing through your leg veins, despite this pressure rise. So stand up and go tell your friends that if they are not learning cardiovascular physiology through non-stop neuron videos, they are learning it the wrong way. See you in the next video.